Right. Mm. right. Are you Swifty? I, it's, uh, I, Spotify category categorizes me as such because I just got an email today of like for Swifties and it was advertising some 1989 merch. Oh. I, I, I do like Taylor, Taylor Swift a lot. Okay. I okay. wouldn't necessarily call myself a Swiftie because I've seen the level. No, you're it. reform. I'm, I'm reform. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but, but I have. I. 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 I, uh, uh, I mean, are you Swifties? I am not. I have given. Uh, here's the thing. I have given her like a listen. Here's the thing. Um, well, uh, when I listen, listen. To, sorry, you've given her a listen. I've given her a listen. Oh, I love this. But the thing is, I. It's very hard for me to enjoy it because I think that Taylor Swift is for people that are lyrics listeners. I see. When it comes to music, I, see. I am all about the instrumental, the beat, the mm. the vibes of the music. I like nine times out of 10, I can never tell you what the lyrics are about in a song because they're not what I listen to. Okay. I relate to this deeply. I, this is how I listen to music. This is how I identify as But a you still like Taylor Swift. This but is I still like Taylor Swift because I think mu- mu- musicality, like the musicality I think is very good. I'm, I mean, I'm oh, not like- you have like, bad taste then. Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. No. Um, no, but I, this is interesting. Go on, talk about it. Well, no. Like, so if we're talking Drake, which I, I do listen to a lot of- And we are. And we are. And we are. If we're talking Taylor Swift, we're talking, yeah. we're talking Drake. We're talking Spotify top 10 artists on the planet. Just, yeah. Yeah. But I, I bring Drake into the conversation to say that a, I got into Drake because he's a very like gen, at least for, from the start was like a very like moody sort of like a uh, uh, atm- lot of atmospheric sort of like I really liked him in yes. the atmosphere days. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And I, I and 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 I realize and I have a friend back home in Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota oh. who is a big hip hop guy and he we we will always bond over drake records Mm -hmm. and he is a very much of a lyrics guy and so Mm. he will always like you know text me a quote like you know a a, a whatever a a section of like a drake song that like just came out and even if i've listened to it like a billion times i won't often nine times out of ten won't know the song even though i love the song like a, a song like um um, Summer Games, perhaps, off mm-hmm. of Scorpion. Oh, I, you know, I never listened to Scorpion. You want to give us a little burst of it? Dun, uh, it's, it's very musical. It goes... Dun, 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 Mm. Oh, like driving on a <laughs> that highway. feel when a song suggests movement, yes. and you'd be yeah. like, "I gotta move." <laughs> it honestly, it honestly, maybe this. Is, do you do, do you? I mean, well, how are you as a, a music listener? I'm fifty fifty. I'm bi. Okay, um, all right. I uh, so it's just, so you're so you don't listen to music because that's not real. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm um, I don't have ears. <laughs> I'm okay. invalid. Um, okay. I mostly like the music, but I also internalize lyrics really well. I like can memorize lyrics very quickly. Okay. okay. It's like the one thing I have memory for. I don't have memory for anything else in my life. If I'm dating you and you have a birthday, f- put it in a song. Okay. I'll remember it. <laughs> I mean, you're like the, you're, you're like, uh, you know, most of the consumers. I mean, you're describing the, the, why jingles exist. Mm. I'm a, j- I'm a jingle lover. I am. Jingle lover. What, what I'm a sucker for is like a pop beat. Yeah. I need like mm. a, like a catchy little hook. Yeah. To really, to really get me in there, or like an atmospheric, you kind of feel like you're swimming in it. That's why I liked original Drake. Yeah. Current Drake, I, he's yeah. just so cringe. Yeah. I you're mean, like a fish because you like to get caught by a hook. Oh, mm. <laughs> the, they have, and and they have said that about me. They have. Yeah. yeah. A lot of. That's why you smell like that. Anyway, welcome <laughs> to Two Nosy Meerkats. <laughs> welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats. If you can smell me from here, thank you for listening. We have an amazing guest on the podcast today. Uh, you may know him from his show Hound Dog. You may know him from JFL. Keep Indeed. it going for Nick Mestad. Nick Mestad. Or is it Mestad? It's Mestad. Mestad. But oh. I'm not, I'm genuinely not picky. Nick Mustard, how are you doing today? I get that all the time. I'm very well. Yes. Do you actually get that all the time? All the time. That's fucked up. What, what is the worst someone has mispronounced your name? I mean, it's... It, it, Truly, it, were you like, damn, that's impressive. Oh, man. I mean, Mustard, I would get called in elementary school sure yeah um 
which I kind of relished. Um, hey! First time I've ever made that joke. No, it's always Mistad or Mastad. And like okay. whenever like uh, like solicitors would call growing up, it was always that. And that's how we could kind of identify that. Like, oh, this person does it. Gotcha. This person's like a May I ask what country of origin the name is? Norway. Norway. Scandinavian. Scandinavian. I, yeah, so so I'm from Minnesota. Very, mm. very Scandinavian Indeed. background. A little bit of Polish in there. A little bit yeah. of Polish German. in there. Can we get the full recipe? <laughs> Yes, I'll, 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 Please, uh, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll air We need to know, we know, mix it up. We want to yeah. make a, a Nick Mastad at home. Yeah, you can. People and if you, it's really, it's just a pinch of, of Polish, a pinch of German, mm -hmm. a lot of, lot of, uh, Sweden, a lot of Norway. Love it. And, uh, bake for, I don't know, 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> At any temperature, at, at, truly, at, you don't even have to turn on the oven. It's a very just like kind it's, of put it in there. And yeah, let it, and then let it it'll kind of just prove. rise. Yeah, <laughs> and I have a mind of its own, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll, uh, yeah, it'll be prone to to bouts of of um, rumination, but mm -hmm. ultimately a peacekeeper, and uh, and I think easy to get along with. Do you oh think you get so along versatile. with your clone? Um, wow. Oof. The dog says no. I think I would get along with my clone, my clone. Fascinating. Yeah, mm. because if we're talking like, um, you know, like the Xerox of a Xerox, like the, mm. the, you know, the first Xerox isn't is pretty. So close what you're to saying is you're a clone. I could be. Yeah. I could be. Yeah. I was talking about this recently mm. with with Shosh Broadman. Shout out. Shout out. My, former guest. Shout out former there. guest yes. and my co-host for Hound Dog. We were talking about Prestige recently and, and uh, the movie Prestige. And it was like a thing where it's like, have we all seen the Prestige? I have not, not seen it. I do not know this movie. Neither of you. Seen Wait, can, no. you, can you give explain? Us, give us a little explanation. The summary. I, I'm going to stop right there because this is what I'm, a, what I'm literally. It's a spoiler? Yeah, it is. A, it is like, uh. it, it is one of, I would say, Prestige because it's, it's, it's slightly more of like, I wouldn't say it's a cult movie, but it's not like. A, a gigantic cultural phenomenon. Forgive me for pausing you. Do you think we could be, give, be given a spoiler? I think we could be. I, I think that would I be think okay. I think it would be okay. I mean, last night I watched a set where someone spoiled the entire plot of Remember Me with Robert Pattinson. Oh, a TikTok did that for me. Uh, yeah. Which is that he... <laughs> yeah, 9-11 did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it really did happen. If you, yeah, if you watch the Ken Burns documentary about like that, that's like the, you know, minute by minute um, yeah. uh, of 9-11, you can see Yeah, you can Robert see Robert Pattinson, Pattinson in the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's heroin. It really, it'll fuck you up. Yeah, like yeah his yeah. acting. Anyway, yeah. Um. <laughs> his acting is so bad in the Ken Burns Day by Day uh, documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, so uh, prestige, okay. prestige. Yes. So I'm just gonna just just full, full just blown. Dive just in. do it. Do it. So it's revealed. Well, <laughs> I have to, I'm gonna spoil the movie. I'm gonna describe the it, basic premise of the movie is Christian Bale and uh, Hugh Jackman are turn of the century like uh, uh, illusionists, and they're trying to one up each other, and that's what the whole movie is. And they're each coming up with a bigger oh, that illusion. is so fun. It's fun. It's a fun movie. I do recommend it. It is like, and it's early Nolan, so like it's it's okay. it's a thinker. Nice. Okay, love it. And but the 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 um, spoiler then. It's kind of a dual spoiler because they're both like it becomes basically impossible because they're like both reappearing and appearing and like on stage in impossible ways that the other is like always in the audience with like you know like a disguise being like how did he do that and and running off like kind of in a, in a huff. Oh, I dig. Um, and it's revealed that uh, uh, a couple of things are revealed, but the spoiler is that Hugh Jackman uh, via his relationship with Nikola Tesla, uh, uh, figured out how to clone himself. And what he was doing with this like bit is that he would clone himself. And basically it was like, he would send himself, like he basically teleport himself and the, the clone would be slightly teleported and appear somewhere nearby. It sounds crazy, but it works, but somewhere nearby. <laughs> but then in order to like keep this, it a secret and him not to have a bunch of clones is that in the illusion he drops and he goes in the, and the like original version of him or the clone, I'm not sure hmm. is dropped into a full tank of water that's locked. And the, the clone is just drowned immediately. And so at the end of the movie, it like pans up and there's this hallway of Hugh Jackman's just like drown in these things. It's very cool. So, but like going back to the, I, I mean, it's a great movie. And haunting, and I'm wow. <laughs> sorry for spoiling it. But um, going back to our clone conversation, I think I would get along with my clone. And to your point of like, maybe I am a clone. Maybe I am. Maybe we all are. Yeah, and we just don't know it. Yeah. Wait, okay. Yeah. Let's say um, you you that someone presented you with a button and said, "All right, when you walk, when you press this button, that means that when you walk out this door, mm -hmm. uh, a clone is a perfect has all of your memories and everything, but knows it's a clone and it's not going to try to replace you. It's like, no, 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 I'm not going to, but I'm here to do mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. What do you do 
with this perfect clone who's just basically at your disposal. So I've pressed the button. You press the button and you choose for this clone to be in your life. Doesn't it have to be in your life forever? What but happens you can get when you press the button, though, Lucas? Because I feel like every time you press the button, there's always some consequence. No, 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 no. Let's say there's no consequence. I literally no just want to know what you no would do if a clone was given to I you. Mean, you could do anything. Th- I mean, th- I mean, that's a huge moral, ethical, and a, so much other cool question. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm responsible for this person now. They know they have all of my autonomy, like in terms of like what I know. Yeah, they they have all of your memories. So you could put them in a situation. They could answer any question, you know, if they have all the memories of all relationships in your life so that if you wanted to send them out to talk to someone, they could like have a full conversation. That's what I mean. But they'll still do whatever you want. They're not going to have their own agenda. Wow. They are. They will do whatever I truly Wow. It's just a perfect, exact copy of you that will do whatever you ask it to do. What do you get up to? I'd be the sweet life of Gabby and Gabby. I'd take her for walks in the park. <laughs> I'd take her for walks and I'd hold her hand. I hope I'd, you pick up her poop. But, yeah. I would not do That's, that. But I would put on a weird little hat on her and make her look different than me and like dye her hair so that we wouldn't look like twin gays. But, mm. but would you date. dye his hair? See, but maybe there's a color you've always been a little bit that, scared to try. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Weird they're going to they're basically going to be like a paper doll version of you where you yeah. could just like, I, I, I don't know that I would do that. Like, okay. but just because it was just like, this is because it, it runs the territory of like treating it subhuman. You know, yeah, and that feels weird. Not, not to good. not to be up on like a you know a pedestal. But this like version, but copy of Nick Mustad is like, yeah, fuck it, do whatever you want. I'm not even a person. Yeah, man, it. fuck my face. Like, just treat me like literally. A, just treat me, treat me like a. Can we swear on this a whole podcast? As a whole, use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Treat me. I'm just whole, man. Just like yeah, just do whatever you want me. I mean, truly, man. You want to fuck my face? You can fuck my face, man. Just do that, man. I'm your clone, dog. I'm here for you. Dye my hair. That's like softball, man. Fuck, like, like fucking put it. Fuck my, my hair, face dude. and dye my hair. See. Yeah. Level, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same fuck. level of demeaning. Not fuck me while you're while you're coloring my hair. Man. Would you like, rather? Just like I mean, that is very fun. That is very funny. A clone who's like, <laughs> fuck me, man. Come on, man. Just like, let, let me get you off, dude. Let me fucking get you off, dude. Dude, dude you look stressed, man. Come on. Um, just a horny fucking clone yeah. from the jump. You come home, That's just, just like, like had a rough day teaching you improv, dude. Let me just like suck you dude, off. Come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I mean, what I, are you doing? I, I also like you it. Deserve just it. Like, you deserve it. You deserve. Just, just, just I, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> just let me think. I just walked in the door, Nick. Okay, man. Let me make you some dinner then. Just naked with like an apron. <laughs> 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 That I mean, it's just, yeah. This is so weird. Like, just chill, man. You can just you can wear my clothes. Like, we can both share the thing. Did like, you do? Nah, the I gotta be naked no. with the apron, man. I gotta yeah. I gotta let you know where that you're in charge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you want some water? No, just fuck my face, please. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you want some water? Okay. You want to fuck my face too? Yeah. yeah. Man, man, like I can. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I can, you can suck my dick if you want. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like we can, we can sixty nine or whatever. Yeah. Man. I just want to talk. Man. <laughs> I just want to talk. What do you think about you know like <laughs> road trips we used to take as kids? Like, isn't the nature How of memory? Mom? <laughs> yeah. How even is mom? I mean, you know, it's the type of thing where it's like, you know, it's like, like, what do we inherit and what's like ours? You know, in terms of just like habits and like mindsets. Mm, like, that's yeah. what fucking totally, man. So stop unzipping my pants, <laughs> man. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry for getting angry. Well, it's okay. It's okay. Do you mind if I beat off? Like, do you mind if I? Like, do you mind if I? Just go in the other room. Just go for. Just go for. He he gets he gets arrested for public indecency. <laughs> or no, I get arrested for public indecency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For him. Yeah. He's like, no, no, no. Don't worry. I'll take the fall. This was me. Well, I that's did. the yeah. ultimate travesty. That it's you who gets arrested and he goes on to live a normal life. No, I have a clone. He, I, he's. I figured out cloning and he's a clone. He's a clone. Yeah. And I just did it for me, and it turned out he was really you annoying. Fi- I didn't share the info. He cloning? visits you in jail, and he's like, "So, do, like, you still want me to suck you off? Like, <laughs> hey, man, do you just want to like put your dick up into the glass, and we can just kind of, you know, like, kind of pretend I could be airdrop this. it, <laughs> airdrop your seed in my mouth, dude. Come on, come on, dude." That's Send me a letter. Good. It's just come in an envelope. Come on, dude. Yeah, I, I like it wouldn't open. This How did it not way. dry? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is very good. He, he bubble wrapped it. It's one of those like posters. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. Well, it worked. Oh, God. <laughs> He's like, clones are very advanced. Clones are, clones are very advanced. Clones are very advanced. It is funny to think of like a clone that's just like slightly, like it's a slight Xerox of, Xerox of a Xerox, but it's living as you while you're behind bars where it's just like, because now I'm imagining clone Nick like, like showing up to like my job with like wearing like a, a like an just an apron but nothing mm. else and being like okay no 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 no, no. I'm, Nick. I'm Nick what are you talking about I'm Nick I'm Nick okay cool and where do we beat off where do we beat off? <laughs> where do we beat it that's a great thing to do first day on the job so like where are we jerking it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like. Is the bathroom okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, I gotta play coy. Oh, 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 oh look at oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. What whoa. are you talking about? Okay. We don't do that here. We don't do yeah. it here. Oh, oh okay. we're none a good of, Christian none of us company. None have genitals. <laughs> yeah, I'm never stressed and yeah. I don't need to beat off or Could you stop uh, fucking around and answer the question? <laughs> Fine. Fine. <laughs> you have a good memory and are persistent. Um... <laughs> What would I do? Yeah, actually, what would you do? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a motif of the episode. It's yeah. kind of a theme. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, what I would do is feel uncomfortable. Yeah. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. And it's just, it's so odd. It's very Black Mirror. It's very Twilight yeah. Zone. Like, I mean, no, Black Mirror is when your phone is weird. <laughs> Don't you know? That's the that's the like tagline on like the new like uh, you know subway ads Black Mirror. But what if your phone was weird? <laughs> <laughs> what if the computer listened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. It's what if the computer listened? Yeah. Listen, don't forget. What your... if your iPad was neurodivergent? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then it's like the question mark and has like a little skull for the. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what would I do? I take him for a walk, leash him, him up, take him for a walk, leash him up. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would. I you have, don't want I, him to get lost. Don't want him to get lost. I would have him start making money. Honestly, yeah, uh, he yeah. would be a money vessel. Mm. Oh my yeah, god, that's like in vessel. The Sims, and that there's there's this horrible story that I read somewhere that like there was a girl who had like a a a whole family of Sims, and then put them in the basement, took the ladder out, and made them all really good at art. And then put another family of Sims above them on the on the top floor where they could like get out of the house easily. And they would like take the really nice pieces of art from the family that made art and like sell them. And they like got rich. They oh. were like rich Sims. Oh. But like the Who is this woman? But they a basically fritzel? But they basically had like hostages in their basement. Wait. Wait, what did you just say? A Fritzel? What well, is that? Okay, do, oh, it's it's pretty dark. Do you know about like Joseph Fritzel? No. Wait, he, I actually don't know about this. I hate slash love this kind of stuff. Yeah, no, this this is about to get really disgusting. Okay, this is about okay. to get really dark. But it's a guy who locked his daughter in the basement mm -hmm. and then like and then like had children with her and, and they were all locked <gasps> in the basement for like over a decade. No, it's okay. not like that. It's not real. It's the Sims. <laughs> it's not like I'm sorry, you said locked in the basement, my mind wanders. Okay. I to other atrocities. Well, also the yeah. Sims are not related to each other because they're not freaks, okay? They're just hostages. They're sorry. just friends. Yeah. yeah, they're just friends. They're just like neighbors that became hostages. Hostages, yeah. 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 I, you know, I do wonder with this Fritzel guy a, a potential ad campaign for The Sims could have been like pictures of like you know predators like this that have done like the you know room situation shit. Great start. Like, and it's just like and it's like their mug shots or like you know uh, uh, or you know photos of the scene or whatever like that. And it could just be it's it Sims and it's being like, wish if they had Sims they wouldn't have done something like this. <laughs> and that's the and that's the ad campaign. Can I tell you this is actually the answer I gave to a. Um a Good. quandary that I was given on uh, a dating app once. I was I was asked this question, which was, uh, if aliens came to Earth and said that they would uh, destroy the planet in two weeks and all of the world's resources were poured into you and you had to come up with a solution, what would you do? And mm. the answer that she told me was the right answer was that you teach the aliens the Sims because they obviously have like a bloodlust and an, and an urge for destruction and then you give them an do outlet. They? Are that we is assuming not... that? I think the aliens are cool. I don't think the I aliens think... have a bloodlust. Okay. Wait, but it, wait, so, the, okay, but the, the, is the hypothetical is what? The hypothetical is that aliens tell the tell Earth, they let them know ahead of time, hey, we're going to destroy the planet. Okay, so that's, a, that's a baking. Let oh, them know ahead so of time. So that's implied. Sorry. But I am with you. I am with Thank you. you. But I, and I agree with that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, you're peacekeeper. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
but I will say that the uh, 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 um, I'm with you in terms of the aliens thing of like everyone assumes that they're going to be like have bloodlust or enemies because I mean it's fear of the unknown. But I also think that. And I, 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 what do you think of this? Mm-hmm. I think that our like the green alien, gray alien, big eyes, just like what we think of the you know yeah, kind yeah, of like yeah, alien. Sure. If and when we make contact, mm-hmm. how much do you think we keep that imagery from the aliens? And how do you think it's <laughs> received? Oh, Great question. Oh, that's going to be so Great. awkward the first time that's they see it. That's so funny. <laughs> go- right? What, what you guys think we were going to look like? Oh, you don't Oh, you drew a picture? Can we see? see you, don't uh, have to, you don't have to worry about that. that. No. Yeah, no, we, we have no... We we didn't even think that this is possible. No, like a possible, no, We haven't no. been ruminating on this at all. No, there's not like a whole like genre of like mass media that's devoted to... Yeah, don't go to this costume store. No. Let's just stay right here. Just stay with us. How are you doing? You like tea? Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys thought we were going to be ugly? You guys thought we were going to be ugly? No, we're no, buff. No, no, yeah. <laughs> and we kind of look like you, but just uncannily. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah, I think it, I think that's going to be... <laughs> let's just say I think th- any depiction, con- modern day depiction of alien imagery is uh, going to go for Boku bucks in the future as a collector's mm. item of uh, rare... Uh, antiquity that is you, you brought up such a good point i want to ask let's say that you're an alien and you do not look like that yep. but you were shown that yeah how would you feel well yes i mean well think if they have depictions of us right mm. oh god imagine if they look like me humanity would be insulted <laughs> but wh- how would you feel if it if they literally showed you like a picture that was like that was almost perfect exa- like me per- if it was perfect like you and they said and it was true that it was like no no, no this is just like we just this what is we guessed what we guess and it's 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 it truly exactly you what would you do that's such a good question oh my god i i would probably be like i mean i can come over <laughs> <laughs> you'd be famous you i mean would, you'd yeah. be instantly yeah. like irreversibly and ironclad famous wow um i i may how have... would you feel <sighs> per almost exact representation exact. of gabby like not just uncanny, There's but no it's way. it's truly like you. There's no way that aliens all look like Jewish girls who did Model UN once. There's I, no way that's true. It is such n- a specific look that 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 it that's, is a specific look that is bred only on the Lori that. side. You say of that, York. but then again, I have also we have talked many times how you get confused for like other ethnicities, like you get clocked as things that mm. you're not. Are you saying aliens? <laughs> Uh, wow! Wow, Lucas! I'm uh, saying what I'm saying is that what you're saying, it, it, you aren't confused. as like I unlikely do, a choice as, as I think you're saying. I do you get might confused be. for other ethnicities. Exa- that's all I'm saying. Mostly in, in, Latina. In, shout out. Okay, and this this like shout out to my girls. Shout out to this Latin like America. In public? Uh, yeah, mainly wow. uh, mainly during the pandemic when I would wear the mask, mm. people would be I like. See speaking to me in spanish and i pull the mask mm. down and for some reason they would go oh never mind okay it was uh <laughs> okay yeah Fascinating. interesting yeah i, I don't know. i got russian a lot in high school i went to high school with a lot of russians and like in the neighborhood where i went to high school there was a, a lot of russian people and they would ask me like if i and i'm like no i'm so sorry and they and mm. they would get mad at you i'm like this isn't my choice <laughs> i would speak russian could, if i could, could choose, but i don't know you could the, choose to be russian i could yeah yeah i mean yeah. That's and that's a, my fault that I mean, there's a there's a movie there for sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the boy who pretended to be Russian <laughs> through no fault of his own. Trans Russian. <laughs> yeah, peer pressured him to being Russian. <laughs> there's something there. There's it's something. got legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah, got yeah. legs. Um, I don't know if I've told. Forgive me if I've told the story on the podcast before, listeners. But mm. if I if I did so, it was a long time ago. Uh, when I went to the Roswell Museum, have you been to Roswell? I've not. I have a friend who has. Um, or tried to. Roswell's but. amazing because they're just pimping out their alien shit. Sure. I as mean, tourism. Nice. Yeah. They have this really rinky dink museum. Um, it's like an aliens museum. And 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 uh, forgive me, is Area 51 in Roswell? Yes. But this is not on Area 51. No, this, this is, is a museum about Area 51. That's nearby. That's nearby. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. So uh, I go on this road trip I'm on, we go to this museum and uh it's like really small. It's like a tiny little room. But you can tell it's like very right wing in there because because they ask us immediately. They ask because you feel at home. 
Yeah. My people. Because I'm saluting and they're saluting. Well, it's because yeah. we're these we're we're these three kind of like liberal looking motherfuckers who walk in and the first thing they ask is like, uh, are you guys first responders or military? And they know the answer. When was this? This was twenty twenty one, I go. Wow. So they're asking us to be jerks and we're like, No, sorry. Uh, so we pay five dollars to get into this museum. Oh, I see. Funny, yeah. mm, very yeah. funny. It would, it would be, very good. yeah. They're very like, good. Of course, of course. Very good. I, I like love it. This. Yeah. So we walk in. We we've all taken an edible, and um, the first part of the museum is this like uh, text on construction paper printed out descriptions of like what happened in Area Fifty One mm-hmm. and how the government hit it. And I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, this actually seems kind of legit. Like, mm-hmm. who knows that aliens didn't land here and the government didn't hide it? Like, didn't they literally confirm last year that that did happen? Like, yeah, they confirmed something. I don't know if it was there. Maybe it was there. They 51, confirmed so. that like something happened. Yeah. So I'm reading it. And I'm like, st- confirmed UFO sightings. Right. And, but I and yeah. then and then they allowed a guy who worked in government. To sort of say that he thought that there were aliens. Yeah, non-biologic humans. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It was was kind of about how, like, the government covered all this shit up. I'm, like, stoned out of my mind. I'm like, oh, my God, our government's fucked. Like, there are aliens 100%. Mm -hmm. Like, aliens are real. Everything in this museum is true. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the second part of the museum. (laughs) There is a big painting of a gray alien. And over the top of it, it says gray lives matter and i go this whole museum is fake yeah and then from there on out the second part of the museum is depictions of aliens in popular culture painted poorly onto construction paper painted (laughs) painted or like hand drawn and taped onto the walls Wow. It's so So we're talking like someone okay. like drew like e- e- Egger from like Men Yeah, yeah, Black, yeah. But or it's a, a or like there's these like ugly That's kind of adorable. I think it's really uh, There's cute. like these ugly like spy uh not Spider-Man, uh Star Wars dioramas like there's okay. there's all this just like ugly alien artwork and then that's the end of the museum. Is it by like do they say is it kind of just like user submitted sort of stuff or is it like I, a who resident knows? Artist? I really don't know. That's bizarre. That, that but you could just be I mean, it just seems like so much extra trouble. I think they ran out of space. Like, I, no, I think it was that they they, they didn't have enough space. Running out of space. Yeah. Hey, no. Hey. That's, Come yeah. On. Or sorry, it was the opposite. They had too much space. They had to fill space. Hey. Oh, wow. Well, we, we all gotta, gotta fill space. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Sp- space bar. Please, you want me to blow you? I'll just blow you. Just go. Please, Dude, let please, me blow buddy. you. <laughs> Let me well, feel, come on, yeah, suck your fucking dick, dude. Just let me, just let me fucking suck your dick, dude. Chill. You are so stressed. <laughs> let me suck your fucking dick, dude. I'm your clone. It, hey, it's you, okay? It's you. Um, I mean, on on the topic of like independent museums, I think that's always like a like, well. Well, because the Great Lives Matter thing is it truly mm. like it, it's like that's exactly where it's like. Yeah, this is my museum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you don't like th- this? Well, this is my museum, though. Like, I feel like there's some, like, wax museums that fall into this category. Really? Have any of you ever been to Wisconsin Dells? No. Are you familiar? I do not know. Is, I've no. been to Wisconsin once. Okay. I don't know Wisconsin Dells. I, 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 so I didn't know if it, because I grew up in Minnesota. So Wisconsin Dells is a somewhat regional, like, attraction. They have, like, I think okay. it's the water park capital of the world. It could be wrong. Ooh. But it was, like, but it's it's kind of, um, I mean, so shout out to Wisconsin Dells. Love Wisconsin Dells. It has a very kitschy charm. Love it. But there there are, like... There are. It has a very independent museum vibe. I think there's a place called, at least there was when I grew up, called Robot World. That was like a robotics museum, and it was, but it was also like, it was very like DIY. Like you were on the elevator and you look up and there's like an astronaut like th- through like the clear ceiling of the elevator, Whoa. which was like that is cool, but also like, who who constructed this and like are we is it OSHA approved? Yeah, and, you know, a place that I want to go to is the. Uh, the creationist museum that's sure. in like in so Kentucky. Badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so want to go to that yeah. so badly. I believe it's in Texas. It's in Texas. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, interesting. I, I thought it wasn't. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. I just know South. Did, did He's got have... like an Amish person's beard. The guy who runs it. Oh, really? He was in a debate with Bill Nye. I, I have his face in my mind. I forget his name, but debate with Bill Nye. A... Oh, why yeah. do Why do people sign up for these debates? I'm sorry. It's all in bad faith. Because middle it schoolers like me need something to watch. It's yes. in Kentucky. You're right. It's in Kentucky. And no, Kentucky. 
Yeah. Where in Kentucky? Not to, not to, um, sorry. I didn't mean, like, I, if it was. Boone written. County. Okay. Boone County. Interesting. Mm. I, um, it's open today if you want to go. Yeah, it's walking distance. Yeah. Yeah. Can we? Yeah, let's yeah. go. Yeah, all right. Cool. All right. Um, that was the sound of walking. <laughs> that's, um, that's how walking sounds. Yeah. That's how walking Phoenix sounds. Um, <laughs> uh, awesome. Awesome. But they have the arc there, correct? Uh, yes. Not the arc, but. <laughs> no, they have the an arc. arc. They a kinda, recreation. They kinda have a the very OG. good arc. A very good arc. I, I, I will, I will give them this. It looks great. There's yeah. over it looks awesome. 51,000 yes. pictures on Google. Sure. <laughs> and they're insane. They're insane. Wait, while Lucas answers the landline, <laughs> I just want to show you. Hello, goodbye. I just want to show you these pictures. Yeah, can you believe these still on the landline? It's incredible. Just, just flip through. Just flip through. Oh wow! Because these are uh, these are unbelievable. Talk amongst yourselves, watchers and listeners. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, I mean the, the this is I mean it's really I mean it's 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 really um. It's a lot of di- dinosaur content. A lot of di- I mean it's hard to see biblical like uh, what dioramas along with dinosaur stuff like uh, this is Jesus presumably. It look, I, as a mountaintop, I assumed getting the, the commandments or something. This is, uh, yeah, this, I don't like the, the way this is making me feel. I, yeah. When well, they have like dinosaurs, but they're next to like it, pizzerias and it, shit. It's yes. Like, it's, it, what, it's not anachronistic, but I mean, it is, but it's, what's the word where it's just like, uh, it's just like every, it's just like, it's dumb. Correct. Dumb. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's, du- yeah. I mean, it's like, um, I guess ma- maximalist is like a word for great it, art like, is supposed to make you feel uncomfortable hmm. and there's no art allowed in this museum <laughs> <laughs> this is my museum this is my oh well yeah this is my museum yeah oh you don't like that <laughs> oh this is my museum though <laughs> stand your ground this is our museum yeah Star- Star- Star. so sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh you don't like it <laughs> well that's my exit <laughs> walk out my exit yeah. pay me yeah. Toll. Can yeah. you ask me if I'm you can't first use responder your easy or military? Get... <laughs> in that voice. Hi, welcome, welcome to the the Bible Museum. Are you first responder or military? You kind of know the answer. Like, no. Hmm. Your eyes went fluttered up like this. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, no. I think it's good what they do. I, I, j- I just am not. I a thought part. the question was simple. <laughs> I thought I, you know what I'm dumb. I thought the question was simple. Are you or are you not? A first responder or medical person. I, I'm not, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, that'll be fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, do, I shouldn't laugh. Do, uh, do, do you have card? Do you, Do you take card? We do not take card. Only cash. Only good, hard, legal tender. Um, uh, is there an ATM nearby or? My ATM, yeah. <laughs> Your ATM, yeah. Is there a fee? Yeah, there might be. Oh, there might be. Is it a problem? No, no, absolutely not. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> just, just wondering if you're okay. If I'm okay? Yeah. Lord bless me today. I'm fine. Oh, I'm so glad. I have a lot to be blessed for. Yeah, you do. I have a lot to be blessed for. You have a, a great, great museum. I'm a grandpa. Wow. Congratulations. How old's the, the kid? We don't know. <laughs> You know, oh fuck! Mystery age. Oh, that's we hey, said, that's hey, good. They, he can do anything, or she. The Lord works in mysterious ways, but yeah. only in one of the two. <laughs> only in only only in one of the two. Yeah, so, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll go. I'll go use your ATM. If, but if there's a fee, I, I might. I might not. There, there, there is a fee. I'm telling you empirically. Okay. Empirically, as the Lord sent His only begotten Son to save us, uh, there's an ATM fee on that ATM over there, and I w- and it goes right to me. Wow. Yeah. Um. Well, I um. Uh, I guess it's the only one kind of around here, right? I I could I For miles. I actually <laughs> I actually might just drive to the Chase. Hey, we. You know what's great? We are free to do whatever we want to do in this good country. Mm. So you're you're welcome to do that. Just okay, to, I'm just, gonna use your ATM then because it made you look weird when I said that. Great. Okay. I mean, whenever I See, gra- Grandpa, who, who is who's this lady? Who is? Uh, she? Well, well, Hezekiah, this is a non-first responder from I'm presuming a city of some kind. What do you have against responding? Mm. Um, he's inquisitive. Nothing. Nothing. I'm just like in school right now. Oh. You're just you're gonna become a first responder in the future. Is that what you're in school for? Y- yes. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. 
Oh, that's Kiddo. amazing. Oh, well, you should have said that. Then you get the discount. I, yeah, no, if you're in this school. This is the best day of my life. Yes. I get to see someone on the journey. That's right. It's his birthday today. Oh, my God. Happy birthday, kiddo. Guess how old I am. I heard it's a mystery. 32. <laughs> <laughs> 32. You're fucking. Sorry. You're, you're fucking 32. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Oh, my fucking God. Jesus Christ. You're 32? Yeah. He looks really young. He looks eight. Fuck me. He looks eight years old. Skincare. Fuck me. Gay that is the youngest routine. 32. There's a, there's, it's the Andy Milanakis effect. There's something, yes. there's something wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, I love the Andy Milanakis show. You do? Fuck, yeah. Oh, I have all the DVDs. Oh, really? You that, still use, that's great. Well, that's what I meant is they that's haven't, great. They haven't converted. I have sent many letters and emails to Shout Factory who made the, uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed on the computer. No, and you never will be. No. Mr. 32 year old. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. <laughs> but I am notorious. I'm a borderline harassing Shout Factory being like, you need, when are you dropping Milanakis on Blu-ray? When you drop Milanakis on 4K? <laughs> wow. And they, I'm pretty sure they, uh, I'm pretty sure they blocked me now. I think I, I think I saw you on the news the other day, actually. Yeah, that was me. That yeah. for sure was me. There, there was a little excerpt that was like, if you get an email from this person, like, please block. Yeah, so I'm, I'm basically what, what uh, in the email world we call, I'm on the no fly list. Oh, oh yeah. man. Yeah. You don't you don't understand. Grandpa's big in email. Email famous. I yeah. think I Some will. Some people are Instagram famous. Grandpa's email famous. I, I, I think I will use your ATM then. Great. I think I will do it. Thank you. It's going to be the best $10 fee you ever spent. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We got to give it up to him. God is a man. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Wow. Him. I love improv. I love improv. <laughs> Love improv, little yes and. Oh, little yes and. We escaped like, from our lives. Yeah. Can I ask, what was your experience, first experience uh, consuming improv, if you can remember? Um, great question. Um, my first kind of vivid, like, uh, you know, real, like, uh, impressionable memory of it was, like, f I want to say sophomore, junior year of, uh, of college. Second City Touring Company came through mm -hmm. campus. Oh wow! Shout out Winona State, and um, and they they did like a improv set, and then like a like a um, a jam, like not a jam afterwards, but like a um, they had their like Second City scenes, like sketches that they do, and then um, and then they ha they did like a couple like more like truly improv uh, 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 after that, like just like for like 10, 15 minutes, and. I, I was in a, a, a news writing class at the time and me and my roommate Joe, who was also in the class, we're, we did a story on the Second City for the class. So we got to talk with them in the green room and they were like, hey, what's like, what are certain like, they were asking us like some specifics about campus that they could just like quickly write some improv scenes about. And we're like, oh, we have like a free hugs guy. There's a guy who walks around campus and is like free hugs. And then, um, and then at the show they had a free hug sketch that was just like, um, Something in the effect of like a guy comes out with free hugs, huge laugh from audience. And they mm. didn't, they were not familiar with free hugs. I'm really, I'm really, really diving into this answer. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. this. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Keep going. You're cooking. <laughs> were you the free hugs guy? I was not. Oh, I, oh you I, charged. What's that? You I charged, charged yes. for your hugs. If you're, if you're bad at something, what, never do it for free. Yeah. Um, and but so we but they were not familiar. They're like free hugs. What is it? So he has a free the sign. This is free hugs. Wow. And then you know, cuts to like thirty minutes later, and they uh, uh, one of them comes out on stage with a sign. This free hugs kills. And then um, someone walks in and is like, mm, nah. And uh, uh, and then it's something to the effect of like he he was like defeated. And then he like holds up a sign that that said like um, tongue question mark killed and it was like it blew my mind that i'm like that is like they're invincible like they're oh, yeah. invinci they can like make anything funny yes like it just blew my mind and they were like so cool backstage and so sweet and like that's um, wonderful yeah there, there was very it was uh jordan klepper was in that group oh, wow. whoa yeah, yeah, yeah. that's incredible and he was super nice yeah it was like a very cool thing what were you studying in college at that time was there anything performancey or no i was uh my major was advertising advertising and my minor ended up being creative writing gotcha i did but i did like the improv i ended up doing the improv group like junior year of, mm. of college on and that was really like the the comedy bug bite oh, wow and, awesome uh, yeah but it, it that that like really was yeah that was everything to me was how soon after college did you like deep dive into it as it 
pretty quickly i like graduated in may and then in october and then the, spend the summer in like my parents basement with the plan of moving to chicago in the fall which we did me and my roommate joe from college we moved mm. to chicago in the fall and immediately started taking classes at io chicago oh like yeah that october and um yeah, it, it was one of those things where it was like spring of senior year of college. We were like, we wouldn't talk about after graduation because it was so stressful to even think about. Like, we had no idea what we wanted to do, what it looked like. And um, and then we kind of latched into Chicago and it was like, ooh. And then we like visited there a couple of times over the summer to like, they did like a JFL like offshoot that, mm. that year. And it was just like this really cool, awesome um it was, it was, I'm like so grateful that like I, I was, and I think I, I, I still am to a fault, like just like, um, yeah, let's do that thing. I want like that, that that's a dream. Like I want to do that. And it was just like, was so broke, like for like, like, like desperately broke for like six months because I didn't even line up a job before I moved. Like, mm. was like, but like, but it was like some of the happiest times creatively where it was just like going to class like two, three times a week. And like yeah. interning there and just like absorbing shows. And it was like, yeah, it was, it was awesome. That, that sounds so wonderful. It was awesome. It I was feel like the cool, cool thing about improv is like, it's very high ceiling, even if it is low floor. Ooh, I like that. Like, mm. I feel like with stand up, which is kind of what we mostly do. It's like, even if someone is bombing, you, you, you're still kind of watching them figure it out. Mm. Um, but uh, and which can be enjoyable, mm -hmm. but also if someone's killing, sometimes like they're not killing for you. But with improv, it's like if someone's bombing, like it's really bad, it's unwatchable. But if someone is, if if improv is going right, it mm -hmm. is like magic. To watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally agree with all of that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I think like stand up, and I like. I've never really properly done stand up. I, I, I like I'll do like characters at mics and stuff like that. Yeah. So like watch I've watched a decent amount of stand up and it is like it does feel like it's like almost always mics can be difficult, but there is like a craft that's always on display like to your point that I that is like if you're kind of tuned in it's like can be very like satisfying to watch like over time. But like um <gasps> get it. Oh my god, you were so I close. That, was, I did, I did. that would have been so awesome. close. Yeah. I should have like in full full faith done that. Oh my god. I I, I so was So you were phoning that in. I was phoning that in. Are you yeah. serious? It was like it was like a it was like an instinct response of just like I should probably reach. I was about this. to be like it's a paid actor pay of like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> residuals. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh but I but I agree with you. The improv thing where it is like the high, like the improv highs are like like on, on pretty unbelievable like yeah. watching it or like it, you know if you're if you have like the great when it's good it's part. the best thing in the world it's the best because it is it's just like it's just like and you feel so special that you got to see it in yes. that moment and that's the thing and i and that's like also because it's sand through your hands for better yes. i mean that just kind of sounds like negative but it's like that it's a really beautiful thing that adds to the magic of it where it's like even if this is like recorded it's not quite the same like it may even translate yeah. like a little bit but it's like but yeah I, I like like improv videotape is like like a like a bonfire with like a, a really bright flashlight on it where it's just like, yeah. it's like okay well, yeah. this is like a lot of burnt that's wood. a great analogy like it's yeah. just like under, that's it's really like gorgeous good. yeah at night well gorgeous in the woods and at night and yeah. um, nowhere else no but or like belongs. but it but yeah. it is it's like that does add to the magic it's like when it is like really special it's like that shared kind of of like subconscious feeling of like and mm. this will never happen again and we saw it and like we can yeah. describe it to people but yeah yeah yes yeah what pulled you away from chicago i th i was there for nine years mm. um oh, okay. and i was like very fulfilled there i was very like um captivated and um challenged there like the i, I, I like kind of like I, I you know did it was always doing a lot of improv and like various like kind of sketch stuff, but characters is what I really clicked into and like really in terms of like craft found like, oh, I can, I can like get as deep into this as I want to, like in terms of just myself pursuing it. And so I really clicked into that and really thought it was like a really nice um, application of everything else that I had sort of learned and was doing with like improv. And I basically had like reached a point where I felt like it very quickly became apparent to me that um, if I were to stay, I'm not, I, I could, I could I see myself getting a little too comfortable and mm. not necessarily growing. Yeah. Um, I'm certainly not saying that's true for 
anybody, but that was how, that was definitely like it v very acutely, like truly within a matter of two weeks, hadn't really entertained the idea of moving to New York and within two weeks <laughs> had moved here. Holy Whoa. shit. And that was largely due to, I had a, a decent contingent of like Chicago friends that had moved out here over the years. Yeah. That oh, yeah. Here. A room had opened up. My buddy Micah. Oh, okay. So it was more that the perfect situation yes. had opened and you were yes. like, you know what I'm taking. Yes, yes, yes. I guess I, I told that in a way that was the, just like, no, I just this had is, to leave. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just that kind of person. I mean, if it's just, if it feels right. You just it. saw Made in Manhattan once <laughs> with Jennifer Lopez. I saw the poster for Made in Manhattan. I was like, I'm doing that. I'm yeah. Made in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> so then where do you stand on the pizza, pizza debate? See, I would, this literally came up last night. Or yesterday, mm. I don't. I, I am someone who I think the like framing it as like a versus. I agree. Yeah, it's just it's like they're both good. They're both yeah. so, so good, and they're both like, there's like there's uh, nuance and hues to within each. Why there's must also we pit beautiful women against each other? Exactly. This is this it's is fun to see them fight. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, and it's like fun. That. And and it this is why fun. we have this is why the this is why TikTok is just like lists and verses. A tick night isn't verses, but like I think this is pop culture. It's like lists versus it's extreme. I mean, it's extremes. Where it's yeah. just like because it's just like it's easy to click into and it's honestly like satisfying it's to also, consume. It's, it's when you want like deep dish pizza, it's not the same time that you want like a, a, a thinner slice. Yeah. And so like there's no reason that you can't have both because there's no yeah. situation in which they could ever really compete. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yes. And it's and it's like it's truly. Um, I think that's perhaps what it it's is. It's like a water park competing with a museum. No, they're yes. different attractions. And you're not doing those on the same day. If you're no. ever in the mood for one, you're not in the mood for the yes, other. Yes, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And like truly geographically, like, yeah, there's no way you're doing both unless you're like going way out of your way to have like a, a like taste test competition mm. thing. Yeah. yeah. Which someone should freaking do. So much. Hey, no what, one's done this. Wouldn't, no that be, one. wouldn't that be epic sauce if that yeah. happened? It'd be epic sauce. Wouldn't that be epic, epic, uh, uh, um, epic. And whoever would lose noodles? would get major pwnage. Dude, I got pwned at my buddy's Saturday pizza comp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a noob. Whoa, fail. What did I do with my weekend? You tell me. Watch YouTube. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's a blur. I blacked out after I ate some Pequod's deep. Roar this is the most this is the most millennial conversation that's ever happened. <laughs> yeah, do you ever feel I feel this like more and more where I'm like, "Oh, like if you literally just took what that person just said or what I just said or what yeah. that internet thing and literally presented it to someone like any of us 10 years ago, it's like it's true literally incoherent yeah <laughs> i mean that's like the baby gronk thing right oh yeah when lizzie, when lizzie riz uh livy yeah. rizzed up baby gronk <laughs> yeah i'm that, so confused I, mean, that, I don't know what this is uh, okay so it, i mean it's kind of i think the reason it got popular it was like it was a genuine headline from a news source yeah. of some kind okay but it was like truly every word of it was like just like like zillennial <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and it, and it was just like it, it went viral because it truly was indicative of just like this is we're t this is incoherent to like this is incoherent. I still to like didn't. I still don't understand half of. I know because I have this uh, Twitter account where um, I only uh, follow baseball news outlets, and I have like okay. forty followers, and I know peace. Um, and and you know what? Peace. P yeah, great. I I've learned peace. I'm uh, uh, continue because I have a whole yeah. This is a can. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, Livy rizzed up baby Gronk. I know Riz up because Riz is like putting on the Riz. Mm. And I know Baby Gronk because that is Rob Gronkowski's child. Yes. Okay. But I don't know who, Li I don't remember who Livy is. I don't, uh, yeah, I never knew and I don't know still. Olivia Wilde? <laughs> Baby Gronk. Olivia Wilde Riz up. <laughs> Rob Riz Gronkowski's up. She's no child. longer with Harry Styles. She's, on, what is she's but, but like if someone were to Riz up someone, what does that mean? Because Riz to is flirt to successfully flirt. Riz up. Okay, that's how it. you Riz. Yeah, if, if you Riz have up. Rizzed someone up, that means that you have uh, uh, flirted oh, gotcha. to the you, point of success. Got you. You've but, charisma but who them is to Livy? Yeah. successfully. Livy. Livy yeah. I'm looking this up. Not a clue. Riz. Who do you hope Livy is? I do think it's Olivia Rodrigo. Olivia Rodrigo. Oh yeah. Livy Dunn. Don't who the who fuck is. is that? Disney Channel is my guess. Um, who is Livy Dunn? Okay. Olivia Dunn. Who um, is Livy Dunn? American. Oh, gymnast? she's blonde. 
I don't think this is the same Ooh, Louis okay. gun. Okay, I'm just gonna... Lucas, you're my eyes. Tell me what you're seeing. Uh... Uh, she's oh, uh, that's oh okay, okay yeah that wait looks it, like is JFK. The, it is the correct she looks she's blonde okay. she looks like JFK this, that <laughs> kid looks like JFK ah <laughs> yes oh, baby Gronk doesn't that look like JFK absolutely that it does. does look like JFK <laughs> oh, the headline John. of this article is who is baby Gronk did Livy riz him up what does any of this mean and it's like dust bowl photos <laughs> that's fucking wild <laughs> that's really haunting. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Oli- what is it Olivia Dunn? Olivia Dunn. Yes. Who is Olivia Dunn? That's a that's a um, She sounds like a Jane Austen character. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so it's kind of like uh, Oh, they're the yeah. same age. Okay, cuz Livy Dunn is very young and Baby Gronk is also And very that young. sounds like the beginning of a limerick. <laughs> Livy <laughs> Dunn is very young. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But never known to to be old. <laughs> Baby Gronk will riz her up. Peter as pod, five days as did the tale did told. As yeah. did, that's good. Yeah, are that's you weird. are you a are you a poem person? Uh, do, do I like I I can come up with one pretty quickly. Kind of I can okay. I can I can tr- I can come up with someone on the spot, but it's like okay. yeah. Do you have like a? Would you say you have like a kind of mathematical mind in terms of like structure? Definitely and, okay, mathematical. Got you. Got you, got you. Definitely He'd mathematical. He'd be good at improv for that reason. I think. Sure. Yeah. That's a that type, was that's my a issue with improv was I I couldn't um, put. I get very in my I, head. And I feel mm. in, in my mind, what I think improv is, is being in tune with your emotions and not letting anything get in the way of that and not like second guessing yourself and just trusting your instincts. Sure. That is an issue I have is that I'm not good at that. But, at least okay. I need to I need to. But practice if you all. let go of that, you'd be great because my issue is I have bad um, oh, when I'm under pressure, I have bad pattern recognition. Oh, you that's such an intimate, nice thing to know about oneself. I, uh, I I spend a lot of time with my own thoughts. That's mm. but that's that's I'm I'm really jealous of that like self knowledge. That's like very like really articulate. I mean, in terms of uh, yeah, I just like <laughs> it just it feels like it's just like that's such a good thing to seemingly helpful thing to know about. Yourself. Yeah. Well, I thought a lot about why I was bad at improv because I spent so much money on the classes. That, okay, well, well, what are point, what are our experiences with mm. improv? Um, I did improv. I start. I did improv when I was like fifteen at summer camp. Okay. Um, and then I started doing it when I was really young because I went to college in the city. I started mm-hmm. taking class at the pit when I was like 19. Okay. I feel like I really liked being like the young prodigy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked being everyone being like, she's only 19 and she's so good for 19. But like mm-hmm. when you're like 23 and you're the same level, it's like, well, you're just like, a, a, you're just, no, it's a just like appropriate. Yeah. yeah they're yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and I then agree. I don't know. I feel like I, uh, I just didn't have the sauce that mm. other people had to do it. Interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. My experience with improv, uh, I tried doing like uh, sort of like a session in college and it just terrified me so much. I was like, I can't do this. I mm. And then I worked up the courage after starting therapy. Uh, I started taking classes at Magnet here in the city mm-hmm. uh, when I was 24 and I was in a level two class that was just about to have our like end of class show right and then that got canceled because the pandemic hit. Wow. And since then I've done like a couple like improv jams in like the past few months but I haven't really dived back in to try to build up skills again. Yeah, yeah. You're being so vulnerable and good and I appreciate that but I do love the idea of like someone does a zip zap zap at you you're like oh my god you like run away. Oh no, I'm I'm so good at zip zaps out. My peripherals are insane. I'm just like, zoom zoom zoom. I'm okay, so- this is interesting. This is very this is very interesting. Okay, so okay. why is that? Wait, so so okay, yeah. Well, Gabby, I don't want to press you in terms of like you didn't have press this, us. Okay, you didn't have the sauce like olive oil. Say more, as in olive oil pressed, cold pressed, cold pressed. Yeah, press us, press us. Okay, oh sauce. Wait. <laughs> Olive oil. I got distracted in my own brain. No, but and I'm missing this. You, you have a you 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 strike me, Lucas, as someone who had like a very, um, it's a very specific to like uh uh type of imp- improviser. Interesting. But, but I'm just saying, like it is like I don't know. I'm forgetting the terms, but it's like generally speaking, this. Wait, what are the types obnoxious. of improvisers? This this sounds obnoxious. I'm no, going. No, like, no, no, no. This is so like truly. This is so This is like truly like this is early early improv where I'm like there are like four types of improvisers and who am I? It, uh, please, it's I want to know. Like but, you're, but you're not the kind of nerd I want to smash with a am hammer. Am I a firebender? Okay. Talks about it. What's that? A firebender? What am you I? You are a parcel are <laughs> <laughs> No, but gotcha. What, what are so, the types? So of it's advisors? like it's like the heart, okay. which is just like the emotional play, which is yes. pretty close to what, what you described. Okay. There's um. 
there's the, 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 there's like the person who kind of uh, uh, is like the orchestrator, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term, okay. who's kind of like sees all the pieces and is kind of like, you know, uh, globally looking at things and playing with maybe a little more bent toward, you know, how the how it's all cohesive. That's definitely not me. Um, there cool. is um, called the X Factor, which is just like the the kind of like, hmm. It's a, I don't know how this person functions in society off stage, and that's part of the appeal here. Is just like they're just wild and unpredictable. I think okay. that's me. Okay, great. Okay, okay. I actually do. <laughs> and then there's like the like Rolodex person who's like the logic oh. person. Oh, I'm 100% a hundred percent. One hundred percent. What I'm saying is, is you remind me of um, m like my closest performing partner in Chicago, a and and part of it because I'm like a heart person yeah. like i'm just like an emotion like i play like with emotion and kevin shout out kevin it, it's just like a walking rolodex and like truly was just like like and he would be doing like puzzle like crossword like love puzzle like any sort of like puzzle riddle quiz i'm not putting that on no you. that's me 100%. okay but you strike me okay because I, yeah. I was getting yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that air so that this is i'm not you know do you but that is a, a very valuable and um uh uh um that is a a, a a very like uh useful that's extraordinarily improviser. validating i didn't because i'd never heard it articulated like that that mm. may i feel a lot more grounded and a Nick lot more Mestad yeah. works for big improv i do i work yeah, for, for, for big improv <laughs> we're opening our theater big improv coming soon actually there's a, a theater in minneapolis called bit no they're called huge that's Ooh. huge improv huge, huge i think improv. it's just called huge theater i haven't huge, had okay. the opportunity okay to well there's a difference between big and huge big and huge it's just okay. it's, it's just kind of like medium improv i'm open in the theater <laughs> <laughs> i work for medium improv boy yeah. I, boyfriend improv perfect size <laughs> it's good size actually there's such a thing as too big improv okay? yeah no, it no, actually no, no, hurts. No, you're perfect. Yeah. yeah. No, it's actually there's been there's been studies done that actually like actually medium average. is the most pleasurable size for improv. Yeah. Yeah. Above average improv. <laughs> now, now that's just copyright Statistically, infringement. Yeah. 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 Uh, Wait, so Gabby, so didn't have the sauce. Say more. Well, I feel like when something. I just cracked under pressure. I was like an egg. Mm. And part of it is that I'm a control freak on stage in my own standup. Mm. I'm, I'm very obsessive about like making sure that, uh, that I, I like have the audience or if I don't have them, like trying to win them back. I think that's why I'm, mm. that's why I generally get slotted in as a host because I'm like good with crowd control. Sure. Uh, but, but in improv, you can't really do that because there's like a whole other person or sometimes multiple people there. So sure. if something wasn't going my way, I would like do a weird move to like put it back in my way. And then mm. interesting. Um, when other people got confused, it made me feel bad. Like I'd done something wrong. So then sure. I got sad and performed less well. Sure. So I didn't have the, um, maybe the sauce is the wrong word. I did have the sauce, but like the um, wherewithal. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, it, it, you're so thought, I mean, articulate about it. Like, cause like truly I, like what you're saying, I'm just like, like I, t it, it would strike me that I would experience the exact same thing and be like, man, I fucking suck in that show for no reason. I <laughs> I've had many years to think about this cause I haven't done improv in a long time. Mm -hmm. I honestly think maybe I'd be good at it now, mm -hmm. but I've, uh, I don't know. I've like dove deep enough into stand up and like spent enough money on the improv classes. I would do a jam. I think a jam would be fun. Sure. Yeah, I've yeah. done I've done a couple jams and I've not done what, but they are fun. But then okay. even if jam, you don't do well, they're still so the fun. People walk in and they're like <laughs> potatoes. You're like, what do I do? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. it's but then I see someone who is but does potatoes so good. Sure. Does and I'm just like I can, I can acting never do out potatoes? potatoes? Just Potatoes. Yeah. I just ruined the or joke tonight. I truly had my bit you radar is so tried. bad. I'm like, I literally no, just. No, you couldn't. I, so truly, I did not know that that you was a bit. You did not ruin the and potatoes I was, joke. Okay. Listen, okay. you're valid. You didn't ruin the joke. Zip. <laughs> <laughs> my bit radar is so, Zap. so bad. Uh, Zap. <laughs> Zip. Do you ever get a student like that who's like, uh, what, I'm sorry, what do I do? Like, they get zipped and they just cry. I, um, <laughs> it's shockingly, so I truth, truth, uh, I truly haven't like done, I've done some like corporate gigs where it's like Zip Zap Zap, you know, as like the icebreaker. And I've discovered that almost everyone knows Zip Zap Zap. Fascinating. And I think it's because maybe perhaps the improv bubble has grown big enough 
in right. like you know okay. corporate world. That so everyone like, at this point in a major city is a little bit of theater yeah. kid in them. That, that's a, that is such a yeah. good point. Zipzaz yes. app is like such sriracha. You don't need an ad. You just know about it. Yeah. Is you've it never the seen brand? a com- you've is never seen a commercial for sriracha. Everyone just knows about it. Do you remember when you first encountered sriracha? Sriracha? Oh, I would have been uh, fourteen. Okay. That's, Why do you know that? Yeah, that's then? odd that you knew the, the the number. Well, I mean, like probably not exactly fourteen, but probably around then because like that's when a a, a bon me place like near me opened up yep. and they had it there and we yep. always like put extra and we were like, oh my god, we need to buy this in the shops and then yep. we started getting it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's excellent. So, yeah. rocks. What about you? Do you remember your first? You remember, you oh, remember yeah. your first watch? I do, but Gabby. Um, I feel like it just came about when I was yeah, like just, fifteen. Just, yeah, it just burst on the scene, and everyone treated it like. Do you remember in like? Did you have a little keychain one? I had a little keychain little oh, bottle. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Everyone treated it like that. Like, okay, yeah. in 2010, it was a movement. There was, was a surplus of bacon in the United States, which is why. <gasps> Every, really? Yes, which is why the whole like epic bacon thing came about because ad agencies really? were incentivized by the government to sell bacon. That is fucking mind blowing. Yeah. Wow. Which makes me wonder if the same thing happened with sriracha. Holy shit. I think sriracha Sir- is not that good. They just had an oversupply of bottles with chickens on it. Yes, roosters. Yeah. That, wait, hang on. Th- this bacon thing is truly like a floodgate for my brain. Yeah. Because it was, it was such a like, it, like, um, Inexplicit, like just sort of like, or inexplicable, like just like okay, I guess bacon and mustaches are like our personality. <laughs> an oversupply of mustaches. Yeah, truly, well. I was just about. I was like, were mustachios also an oversupply? There's like a that? warehouse. They're like, please, we can't keep eating these mustaches. We have to sell some. We need to get rid of these. I cannot <laughs> eat another mustache. They don't taste good. My children are dying. They eat only mustache. I'm shitting hair. I'm shitting hair. My body was no, but no person's body was meant to digest. I used handlebars as a handlebars on my friend's motorcycle. He died. Please, we need. My friend is dead because his handlebars were hair. Please, <laughs> ad agency, Mr. Ad agency, I come to you hat in hand. Yeah, please. Oh, please, Mr. Ad agency was my father. <laughs> Call me ad agency. Okay, sorry, Brent. Brent. I was trying to think of a douchey name. Sorry. Yeah. Brand is kind of a douchey brand. name. Brand. Yeah, bra- yeah. Oh, brand. Oh, Brand. What's up? My name's Brand. Brand? How could you not get into advertising with a name like Brand? Yeah. Hello. Brand Brand Muffin. ad agency. Middle name Horatio. Mm, fascinating. Weird twist. Canceled. Love a weird twist. Yeah. Yeah, Canceled. my mom just loves Shakespeare. <laughs> I, Shakespeare's a huge blind spot to me. More on that in mm. a second. Okay. The... Um, the, the bacon thing really does blow my mind. That's incredible. That it, and perhaps there is a sriracha thing, but there's also like a like, I feel like whatever is behind American culture discovering food items. I, I would like to know because I feel like um, like boba had a moment like this. Like we're yes. just coming yes. down from a, oh, uh, yeah. uh, where it's like boba. Like you can actually like you can, like you can just make like you can just get, order it. Boba to, like, is now in its endemic yes, stage. Yes, yeah. totally. It's coming down. Yeah, Salted yeah, yeah. caramel was big. Salted caramel was huge. Froyo had a moment. Froyo had a moment. Froyo definitely. Pink bear. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously pumpkin spice, but that's different. That's like its own. Now that's a seasonal thing. That's just worked itself into the culture. Yeah. 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 Because it truly is. I it's like, like her. She gets a bad rap. Can we talk about this? Let's she talk about gets it. a bad rap. Pumpkin spice. I agree. You know what pumpkin spice is? Cinnamon and nutmeg. That's mm. nice. Cloves yeah. as well. Cloves are in Cloves. there. Cloves are great. Yeah. All wonderfully comforting. There yeah. is flavors. a hit campaign. I je- I love. Well, I I I went to get myself a pumpkin spice latte unironically just because I was like, you know what? This is delicious. Well, it'd be weird I deserve it this. Ironically, yeah. now it's a lovely thing. We should all enjoy things. Yes, absolutely. I think I think what it is is it's like the the hammering overexposure of pumpkin. I mean, yeah. it's it's the it's the absolute dilution of pumpkin spice into everything. But it is. It's delicious. It's delicious, and it's so honestly comforting. I haven't had a pumpkin spice in a long time. Yeah. Do, you, do it. Oh, can I tell you something that I have done? You, when you go to Trader Joe's and you get like the little uh, shakers that have like pumpkin spice on yeah. it, I will put that in my coffee grounds, in my coffee maker. Ooh. Mm. So you're, do you have a drip? Machine? Yeah, a drip. Yeah. So, and then you're just, individual. and then it just comes, and then it's just beautifully spiced coffee. That's beautiful. And then you have it in your mouth, and it's just like, That's oh, beautiful. it's amazing. It's so nice. I haven't done this this year. I should. The, I usually get their like pumpkin spice coffee at Trader Joe's, mm. and the smell of that. If um, I can pinpoint one singular thing that like 
you know, we have control somewhat of our sense memories. And I feel like I, that, that coffee smell has really imprinted on my brain in recent yeah. years. Of like, and it's fall. Yeah. yeah. It's autumn now. I want to talk about your blind spot with Shakespeare though. What uh, do you, do you feel like, do you feel like you are obligated to give the world some a more knowledge of Shakespeare than you have? Is that what you feel? I think one being alive and I can only speak to American or the culture that I I'm in. But like, I feel like there's, it's sort of just like, um, you know, know a couple, like be able to converse roughly about sports and know like, um, you know, no, I, I, I think it's a very admirable quality and I aspire to it to be like fluently conversational in, in, in multiple different facets. Right, I think that's yeah. like people who have that quality I really admire. And Shakespeare is one where I just like I I other than Romeo and Juliet, I I don't and I I have yeah. a very like peripheral knowledge of Hamlet. When when anyone mentions anything, Midsummer Night's Dream, I have like, uh, isn't Puck is in Midsummer Night's Dream? Yes. Ooh. Have yeah. you have you ever seen a Shakespeare production that you genuinely liked? I don't know that I've seen. Never. It's it's pretty egregious. Okay. It's pretty. No, egregious. no 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 no. This is interesting. No, I mean like there's no. Sh I don't have any shame about it, but it is just like it is like as I've gotten older, it's the type of thing where it's like you know like you you, you reach like I don't know a certain age in adulthood and you're like oh like I'm gonna read this book about like I'm gonna read like Dracula or I'm gonna read like this history book or at least that's how my brain works a little bit sometimes where I'm like damn but I almost got the fly. this the, the, the fly is a character. Lucas likes yeah. to hit women. <sighs> And you heard and seen it here first. You've heard it, and this is True Crime 97, uh, Lucas Arnold edition, and uh, he's going to be after you next. Okay. This, this is me and my and my and my mugshot. I'm against glass. <laughs> yeah, he's a Batman <laughs> villain. Yeah. yeah, against glass. Yeah. No, no. Now I'm behind bars. Yeah. He we we so the the glass jail glass bars glass glass bars yeah he's 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 encased in sort of a magneto type uh, <laughs> uh, cage and the the real prison was filled up so we had to take it at uh, Universal Studios Islands of Adventure oh, in the novelty is, shop. there's a URL yeah <laughs> you mean this costs thirty fucking bucks to buy fuck you I'm gonna I'm just gonna take a picture of, of the TV that has the picture of it on my phone and then I'm gonna show it to my I'm family. contained in something with a sales tax <laughs> wait sidebar speaking of universal i went to the warner brothers tour for the very first time in la when i was there i did last. that recently i have not i've not fun time this. yeah very a, fun time it was a fun time but when i was there obviously i took an edible for it and we walk in and we there's like a movie theater where they like introduce you to the wonders of uh Warner Brothers and it was right after the Ellen allegations had like come out where she was mean yeah and the person narrating the tour obviously is Ellen of course, DeGeneres of course and it rocked so hard yeah, yeah, yeah. I, nice. I, I I like stood up and like screamed for yeah. everyone was looking at me like what the fuck is yeah, she yeah, doing yeah. well also in LA everyone is so muted I feel like everyone walks around like like it's, it's like a spacious, sprawling place, but everyone walks around thinking they're going to get signed by yeah. industry wherever they go. Yeah. So like when I walk around doing the shit I do, people treat me like I'm insane. Sure. I went to karaoke and I sang badly and people went up to me after being like, it was amazing that you felt comfortable doing that. <laughs> I love that. I love, I uh. love the, um. There's so much, it's like, there's so much, they're, they're presuming like three things there that they don't even, I would, I, I would venture as they don't even know that they're presuming. Yeah. Yes. Which is just like, okay. Oh yes. <laughs> That's so perceptive. Okay. You know? Like, so yeah. Just like, I actually believe at karaoke during one of the interludes. The, like not the, only are you in the same grind, but you also don't have any of the filters that they have. Yeah. Right. During the 10 second interludes, I'd be like, I'm not trying to get signed by Wilhelmina. Fuck all of you. And they were like, what? Because they're, they're upset. Yeah. That are, I, 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 I've only been out to LA like, a collective of like a two months like collectively yeah it'd be tough to be sad in la mm. yeah I, i'm i'm i i think i i i'm i think i haven't been sad out in la yet yet what is that beeping is that supposed to happen Ooh. Uh -oh. i think it's probably fine it might just be low battery now running on reserve battery power now running on reserve battery boop boop
Robot. Robots are. Robots are taking our jobs. Usually, I'm kind of the camera. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you must be pissed with all these like mini DVs that have been happening in the past thirty years. And stuff. I, I'm I'm really upset. You yeah. Must, like displace. Usually, my eyes are kind of a camera. That's okay. what that's what I've been told. Like your eyes are the camera for the world. But like, you've been you specifically. Have yeah. Been told this? Well, like not to like show everyone, but like for my view, it's like my eyes are the camera. The camera. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but it is my job. But I do get I do get paid to see. You get paid to see. Yes. Yeah. The, you, to perceive the world. Yes. Wow. Cool. So in a way, it's like cameras are taking my job. I mean that that's I mean that's the I would say the 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 the, the like last question I have. There are I mean it's it's truly so you get paid you you not only still get paid but you get paid to see the world. Yes. And do you report what you're seeing? Uh no. Do you upload what you're seeing? No. So you're just seeing the world? Yes. Hmm. I think you might have inherited money. No. Okay. I, uh, it's job. I work really hard every you day. You work really hard. I at... could close my eyes all day. Okay. Yeah. And then you wouldn't get paid. Uh, or you would get paid. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't get paid. Who's paying you? Big site. Big site. Big site. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, I know it's that. a job. Yeah. This is your, where, where do you work, man? Where don't I work? I gig. Yeah. I gig. Where do you work? I'm 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 teaching I'm teaching sketch improv. Mm -hmm. I'm working at a school. So you're working for big sketch. You're working for big school. Big school. Big so sketch. you understand what I'm going through. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was playing devil's advocate here, but I from the jump knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, it's yeah. like the gig economy. Yeah. But Absolutely. but 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 in my case, it's actually not a gig. It's a full time job. Okay. Cool. I yeah. I didn't say it was a gig. Yeah. No. Why no. are you putting that gun at me? Uh. <laughs> oh, I, I I don't know what you're talking about. Ah. I don't know what you're talking about. Speak. I can't. Uh, what I, what the camera is seeing is uh, Lucas. Just like, it's just but mm. he's also, there's two kinds of improv guys, Nick, yep. for me. Let's hear it. There's improv guys I think are cool and fun, mm -hmm. like you. Yes. And then there's improv guys I want to like shove in lockers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bully. Yeah, I want to bully them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, well, there's a certain amount of like humorlessness to some people. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the same is true in stand up. Like, there's stand up comedians where I'm like, why did you become comics if you have no interest in being funny in your personal life? Yeah. There's people who sit there and they're like, Del Close said. I'm like, yeah. fuck what he said. You yeah. know? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, it is the thing, and it's like it feels like that type of thing is like in uh, like you can't. You, that's impossible to communicate to that person. Yes. And so it is just something where it's like in my head, it's sort of like, well, in my head, it's like this, like all the best, bye. Right. Like not in like a. I don't mean that in like a benevolent way. I just mean like I'm writing <laughs> that person off of like, this will never be a th like th there there will there shall be no actual like hanging here. Like, yeah. This is. You are a kind individual yeah. in that way. Yeah. But oh, I mean, I mean, perhaps. What's your sign? Capricorn. Fascinating. I, I do. You, so you are, what's November? What's Scorpio? Scorpio. I hear so much about the Scorpio season. You hear we're loco. What? So our Scorpio, Scor as much as I have heard about astrology, I rem it, it, I have astrology wicking, uh, personality. Okay. Like, and not, not in like a, I don't like it. Let's I'm so clap. open to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, Sorry. hold on. Okay. Let's, let's actually all clap on three. Okay. okay. One, One, two, two three. three. Okay. Perfect. And we are back. We had some technical issues, but Yo. we are back up and running. Everything is good. We have Nick Mistad, and we are about to get into some listener submissions. But first, we're talking oh, astrology. Yes. But first, we're talking Quickly. astrology. Yes. But, but but despite having heard so much about astrology, and I genuinely like, I'm so open to it, and like, I dig astrology. Everything I hear. So I mm -hmm. wanted to be clear. I'm not like, that's not real. Like I'm open to it. But I, I it, it, it. Uh, You're shocks. such a hard improviser. It's such I'm a hard. Open. Guy. I remain open. You're a man of the people. Also, I remain to to a fault, perhaps. To a fault. Well, I also think it's probably. Are you single? Are you on the market? Uh, I'm single. On the market is like is tricky. Okay. Well, sorry. Are you I, open to talking about this? <laughs> Wait, I can talk about this. I absolutely. What does? Absolutely. Okay. Wait, sorry. What I meant was, um, are you single? Are you a sexual object for exploitation of others? Um, are um, you available for others to um, mm -hmm. exploit and see you as uh, nothing am, but a shell? Am, yes. I, am I my clone? Are you a dick are on you a stick? Are you your clone? Yeah. Perhaps my clone, the, the clone version of me is 
probably like a shadow self or something. Mm. I, I, that even that is giving myself like too much. Mm. Like no, okay. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, but I'm 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 an open book. Are you sort of like not actively trying to date right now? You're not like, at all. Not, not at, at all. all. And that's the way it's been for like four year, five years. Interesting. Yeah. Do you just not have an interest in dating? Or <laughs> I do. You... I do. I, in sort of a in sort of a unhealthy way, I'm like obsessed with like I want to like break through like Mm. in some sort of way which I I, I, my toes curl even saying that but like but that is like the sort of thing where it's like you know I I I view it as break through what achieve something like achieve something a connection a connection yeah no no no, like achieve like i'm talking like career oh oh so is there like a certain level of a career you want to reach before you meet x person right x i want to say right now i know how obvious this is in terms of like it's an excuse and it very much is an excuse because you can absolutely have both and i think i think even myself i think i would thrive if i was in a like healthy relationship and pursuing this. So I'm very aware of how thinly veiled this is. It's like, no, no, I can't. Like, I'm focused on my career. It's just, it feels to me like um, I was in a very, like, <clears throat> well, now we're just talking about my relationship. I was in a very uh, uh, wonderful relationship for a long time in Chicago. And it ended amicably. And it was just like, you know, like, I just was sort of like, you know, I, I want to give this everything. Like, my career, like, mm. I just, just I see. my whole self. That's so fair. Which is, which is fair, but it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're but, allowed to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. What's interesting to me, though, is I feel like you have achieved a lot. That's very You've that's achieved very more kind. than most people I know who are doing comedy. Can, can we talk about what you want to achieve? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm truly like, I will, I'm so open to anything you want to talk about. It, like, and if I'm not, I'm like, I will, I will politely communicate that I want. But like, okay. yeah. What's your least favorite toe? Toe, uh, like on me. Yeah, on you. Um, it's probably like the uh, the pinky? the one next to the pinky on my left uh, oh. foot because there's this weird callus. The ring toe. The ring toe. There's a callus on it. There's a callus on it that's like um, formed from my other toe being smashed against it. That's like this like perfectly like right angle like. Callus. You got to stop clapping with your feet. <laughs> I will never. I got to give it up for. I got to give it, I, that's how I, that's, I mean, if you really love something, you're clapping with all appendages. And yeah. I mean all appendages. Say that. <laughs> Lucas Testicle take- against testicle. <laughs> <laughs> that's more of a, like, dog lapping up water. Yeah. Until I started hooking up with men again, I didn't remember what the balls looked like. Mm. What? <laughs> they look a lot of, di- do, would you say they look generally like? They no, they, they don't, all, they don't yeah. all look the same. They look. Were they you look, like, oh, that's look, new in testicles? Yeah, yes. Yes. They and what's new, new in testicles? Yeah. What's new in balls? That's a funny sketch. I wish, all right. I wish they and weren't what's there. what's new in balls? I, yeah. wish they were go- I wish they were not there. Okay. Really? You don't like them? What are you talking about? That is a crazy question. Do I not like, ask any, ask, ask your girlfriend if she likes the balls. I have. What'd she say? Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. It is interesting. I mean, like, like, yeah. I mean, because the balls, the ball, because it's like you hear, like, you hear if someone's like, yeah, I have big balls or he has big balls. Yeah. You hear this. This is said. I'm not. Thr- I'm not. We heard a story about balls. enormous balls exactly where you're sitting. Really? From yep. someone who he had hooked up with a guy who had the the size of apples. He said. Was there like a condition that was discussed? No. I hope. <laughs> No, everyone was uh, apples. Yeah, yeah. that well, that uh, was the word he said, right? Yes, it he was said apples. Apples. Yeah. apples. And apparently, everyone was obsessed with how the the guy was like, "Oh, don't worry, like everyone's obsessed with how big my balls are." But Is it, like, yeah, that 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 guy, yeah. yeah. I mean, Which kind of say sure it has to be unusual? Addressed. Yeah, that is unusual. That is unusual. Isn't it odd though that y- y- that th- however big the balls may be, the testicle is commensurate in size. You never hear about balls that are just almost like snapping out of the out of the sack. <laughs> You know, breaking you ne- at the scene. You, you breaking at the scene. You never hear. You never hear of a, a ball sack that's making the <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh rope tightening God. sound at all times. That's why the that. male appendage is perfect and needs no needs needs no help. Editing. From God. No. No edits. No, no notes. Edits. 
No notes. Guys, and speaking of perfect balls, listener submissions. <laughs> All guys, of them have perfect balls. We've got perfect some balls. submissions from listeners. I tried to look for my phone. I couldn't find it. I'll need you, want you to call it later. But let's let's get into it. Sometimes this. it's yeah. gossip. Sometimes it's advice. Great. Mm -hmm. Nick, you're going to help us answer Love said it. questions. Love it. Okay. This first one is, Lucas, where is your number? Um, there it is. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just finding this crazy meme I sent you. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you <laughs> off camera. <laughs> we it. have fun here. <laughs> I, 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 that was so perfectly like uh, <laughs> expository and it was great. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, yes. These are uh, yeah, cold from Instagram. I'm all about questions. the perfect meme. Okay. Mm. What is one thing you've all done and would never do again? Oh, uh, well, I don't know if this is something I would never do again, but this is something I actively am like, I am never going to try to do that again. Yeah. Uh, right. Ecstasy. I did. Okay. I did ecstasy Ooh. once. I had an amazing time. Mm -hmm. I truly no regrets. I, I didn't have like a crash afterwards. It was literally just an awesome time. However, there isn't a pull for me to try to do that again. Why? It was just it doesn't feel like something I need to experience again that I I'm glad I I don't it's hard to describe but I just I feel like I got everything I could out of it I love that you're satisfied yeah I'm very satisfied with it dare How, I say you're ecstatic yes could we say that you're Molly <laughs> <laughs> I am Molly now <laughs> but how rare is it of an instinct to like love something and in fact experience ecstasy, hmm. the feeling, the I emotion. Did. I truly did. I was frolicking in a meadow. It was beautiful. Literally? Literally. Okay. How rare is it to experience euphoria and then be like, great. And, 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 yeah. and, to, and just to be like, and just to appreciate the experience. That's and then this it, and is the thing it. that I know about myself. I, something that I, I do love about myself is that I know I don't have an addictive personality. Interesting. That's I very know good. I don't have that. Wow. And I had that experience. I'm like, I am, if I, if so, if the perfect opportunity presented itself, maybe I would try it again. Maybe I would, Yeah. but I am truly okay with that. Just living in the past as something that I did once. I'm like, that's great. And I still oh. like smoke weed. I still like do mm -hmm. like drink like occasionally, but like it's that that is something I'm like that was great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm just happy it happened. I'm, that yeah. that's uh, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. Yeah. That's Genuinely, sometimes I think about like I think like you know my ancestors never got to do Molly. You know, just in a shtetl <laughs> in Poland, they never got mm. to do Molly. <laughs> mm. And I'm like, if I, they I, did in the shtetl, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I do. Shadow Molly goes crazy. <laughs> they did have a drug like in, like World War Two times. Really? I'm gonna sound so ignorant because <laughs> it's truly. I think I think it was truly like heroin or something. <laughs> I think I'm talking and thinking about heroin. <laughs> is what I'm thinking about. We're gonna clip that. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Who was giving it to they, who? They had this drug. It made, it made your so body feel amazing. I think it was heroin. It was heroin. <laughs> I think it was like... They gave them heroin in the... <laughs> it was like government like issued like supply, like stocks to soldiers. I think... Are on... you talking about tank chocolate? Sorry? What is that? I don't cocaine, think so. basically. It's cocaine. M maybe. Where it was just like, it was just like, oh, yeah. where did I, I'm trying to think of where I heard the uh, If I look up World War II drug, what will come if up? If you look up tank chocolate, you. I'm oh, sorry, the horny renaissance video is coming Play back it again. <laughs> Play it again, Broomhilda. Um, <laughs> this is so chaotic. Wait, while we look that up, Gabby, what's yours? Um, ooh, I was thinking about it. Um, I will never again do mushrooms with someone I don't know very well. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because it's happened to me a couple of times to varying effects. <laughs> I, I also I'm curious about don't know very well. Well, in either direction, whether you like, do, whether you've hung out with the person a couple of times, but like you're not like best friends yeah. or you like don't know them at all. It's apparently bad to do mushrooms with someone who you're not like very, very familiar with mm. everything they might yeah. do and say. Yeah. Can I say, uh, forgive me for interrupting, but something that I actually felt of the opposite because I did once do mushrooms with you and it was with a group of people that I think at the time you didn't know as well. Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't know any of them very well at all at the time. Yeah. Now well, one of them is my roommate. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. But something that I really liked about that is that something that I wanted to work through with the help of mushrooms was getting comfortable around people. Wow. Was that because like an issue that I've ha- I'll actually talk about this is an issue that I've had since I was 23 is that I found it near impossible to sleep if someone else is in the room. Oh, interesting. It's I had a very traumatic bout of insomnia, huh. a very bad like previous roommate situation that ended very bad. And it was just like I it ended up with me feeling like I couldn't fully relax unless I was alone. And then I could like sort of shut my brain Oof. off. Yeah. And, but recently I have started being able to with my with my girlfriend, which I'm very, very pleased about. That's And is that partially related to the mushroom experience? I think a little bit. Okay. I think like the mushrooms like stu- it felt like being a, like, like he that took a goal. nap in the room. Yeah, I took That's I took an, I took a nap in that room and then I announced to everyone I was like, this is something I'm trying to work through. And I kind of, <laughs> sorry, I don't know why that made me laugh, but you didn't say this is something. It is a funny image. Don't, don't actually say what happened. I don't I, I can't I cannot experience more ego death. Right. No, okay. no, no. I don't remember what actually happened. What I know didn't happen was you going, hey, guys, I'm attempting to work through. <laughs> oh no! I definitely didn't phrase it like that. You weren't eloquent. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't it eloquent is, at all. I'm attempting to get more comfortable with people. <laughs> it's a good like impression that. of me. No, no, no. I mean, I just imagine that as a know, heightened know. version. What yeah. was when I when I was in the the reason I found out you shouldn't do mushrooms with someone you don't know very well Talk was because yeah. uh, when I was in Portland, I went to an open mic and I had just seen this awesome show in Portland. Shout out to I don't remember what the show is called, but the producer. <laughs> His name is Chris. He's very cool. Shout out to Chris. Chris talked about how much he loved mushrooms, how much he knew about (laughs) mushrooms. He talked about that on stage. Um, I was like this out of town comic in for a festival and I go up to Chris. I'm like, great show. I hear you know a lot about mushrooms. He's like, thanks, Gabby. What was it like being at the festival? He's trying to network with me and do comedy stuff. I'm like, enough about that. I was on mushrooms one time and then I just started dumping onto him about how one time I did mushrooms with someone who was my friend and then we became instantly very attracted to each other and then our attraction fell out within five days and our relationship ended very quickly wow and he told me that when you're on mushrooms with someone you don't know well every new bit of information you find out about them has a deeper weighted significance than it would have sober right sure so everything just feels more intense than it naturally would yeah Mm. and the reason the relationship which wasn't going to work lasted probably even five days was because the effects of mushrooms do linger in your system Mm. over time yeah Mm. yeah Mm. Yeah. So, it's what good. is what is something that you have done in the past that you never want to do? Again? I, I would say I would because I, I was um, my uh, up until like a year ago I would have said mush doing mushrooms, hmm. um, and then I read a book. I read How to Change Your Mind. Have we read this book? Oh, Michael no. Pollan. Yes. Uh, just like really, just it's great. Uh, just so phenomenal. I just loved it. He's, he's, like, he's, he's awesome. He's, he's fantastic. He's, I mean, writes in a way that's so accessible and so like just beautifully renders. But also exciting. He gets you exciting. excited about yeah. that. Also because he's so late in life yes. in discovering psychedelics. Yes. And, right, there is like. Yes. Well, the, I mean, this ties right into Mushrooms, which is what the book about, which is just like curiosity and love of life like late in, late in, as one gets older. And one of the things in the book was like, it's like, oh, new research, blah, 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 saying that like mushrooms doing psychedelics, especially for people like who are, you know, getting older is tremendously beneficial. And he equates, he paints the picture of like shaking the snow globe. And like, it's basically like we live our lives like in ski tracks and we just right. stay in these, and we just deepen the ski tracks. And when you take a psychedelic, you shake up the snow and have a new fresh thing of snow. And it, and it's like, there's increased empathy and it, you're just, it, it, it just, it, it really said that, that set the table for like yes. I, w- I want to do mushrooms again. The one time I've done mushrooms mm. was horrible, and it was took too many. It, I mean, the set and setting th- yeah. thing was just like both were. How bad. old were you? I was twenty two, twenty three. Okay. Early days in Chicago, three friends took too ma- too much. Was so broke at the time, didn't have any food in my house. Oh. Uh, t- 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 took the mushrooms, walked around aimlessly in Lincoln Park, like South Southport area, to wait till the mushrooms k- k- kicked in. I'm getting anxious. 
and it was a Saturday and we were just like, let's, um, let's just walk and whatever the stoplight tells us to do, whatever the walk, that's the direction we'll turn. So if it's a walk signal, like we'll go straight and if it's not, we'll stop and then we'll get the, we'll turn. So it's that's what we how did. I walk sober. <laughs> Great. I'm, I'm jealous of your life. <laughs> Aimless. <laughs> so romantic. It's beautiful. Mm. And, uh, we ended up at a little league baseball tournament of four baseball diamonds that were full and had active little league games happening in them and the mushrooms hadn't kicked in yet and we like kind of posted up and i mean it's like pat like parents uh food vendors just could not be more of a public so many active. witnesses so many so witnesses, many witnesses. <laughs> and we like post up and are watching this and like waiting for the mushrooms to kick in like let's like go up on that knoll there and um get a better view and we walk and that's when they like kicked it and it was just like i felt like i was gonna vomit and then i remember like touching the tree and then my next memory was like i waking up i had fainted and like my friends were over and, like hey nick are you good we need to get out of here we need to get out of here and it was just like um it sucked it i i was like it was true that my face was hot and it was like it was like misting that day and i just remember like okay uh-huh and and truly, like, cops were around. Like, no one was, like, looking, but it was just, like, we need to get the fuck out of here now. And, like, everyone was booking it. And, like, I was just, like, truly, and my buddy was, like, Will was just, like, looking. He's, like, dude, you're, like, green. Come on. Come on. And I'm, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And walking. And we walked behind the back. I, I know this is, like, beat for beat. We walked behind the backstop of a baseball game that's being played. And there's a, 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 a street right here, a residential street, that on both sides is at capacity with parallel parked cars walking behind the backstop and I'm like fully like get me out of my body I need to get rid of this feeling and I hear like look out look out look out look out and a foul ball hits the car that's literally right next to me and the car alarm starts going off and these dogs start barking oh my god and I, and I this is very dark but I understood in that moment people who end their lives because yeah. they have a feeling that they can't escape like the feeling in here yeah. was horrible like it's like i can't escape this is inescapable and like there's no way to end this feeling and so that was like my main takeaway from that experience Oof. The, the rest of the experience was like we got a cab and like fisheye lens and then you know in waves i was fine in the back of the cab and like joking around and then like we went back to my apartment i was like in the fetal position in my room with the door closed for like four yeah. hours um did walk out of my job the next day I worked wow. at like a Borders bookstore. Uh, oh uh, my God, and Borders, Borders, throwback. Yeah, and uh, we, uh, sorry, this is just a vivid experience to me, but like, so, so I, we, we came out of our stupor, had had some Chicago pizza, it wasn't Chicago style. We had um, sure. um, D'Agostino's Pizza on Southport and Addison, then walked to the old IO Improv Theater, caught a show, the improv group called Katie Dids did a show where they had like monologues, and one of them said like, yeah, I like, didn't like the retail job I was working, so I walked out on it. And then, and then the next day, I was like at Borders, and I was like residual. I mean, I truly was just like had just had you know the this crazy fucking experience. Jeez. I was like, I'm not happy with this job. And I, I on my break walked out and called my manager and be like, I'm not coming back. Well, wow. for you. Also, yeah. when you fainted in front of the little league game, I mean, you know there was one kid having a really bad game who thought you were the demon that caused it. Okay. Okay, that's maybe that's just uh, softball logic. But have you ever that's thought about how it's your think. fault? Yeah, I, I have not thought about the there is the, there was probably people who saw what me faint. There had to. Yeah. Have been people I mean, who saw me I play uh, recreational softball on weekends, okay. and if that happened and I made an error after, I would think it was your fault. Are you superstitious outside of sports? No. But in, in sports, yes. yes. Okay. And softball particularly? Well, that's the only sport I play. Gotcha. I used to play baseball, but... Yeah. Got you. Are you superstitious, like, with baseball stuff? I mean, yes. so baseball is a very superstitious sport. Yeah, because it's so baked into oh, the yeah. game. Yeah. I, I, I have this belief that every time I attend a Yankee game, they win, because I don't get to attend ev as often as I, I'm used to. So the two or three times I attend a year, they've won. Yeah. I've been like, it's me. Yeah. If I went to more of these instead of watching them on the TV... I would be, I would be fix in the World it. World Series, yeah. yeah. Interesting. I know. It. Yeah. I want this to be a four-hour podcast because I, are like, you a very superstitious person? No, but um, to be absolutely obnoxious, I think of a John Steinbeck quote, which is like it's something to the effect. I know Say this it is and obnoxious. Then leave. Say I don't even. It I don't then fucking I don't, leave. I don't even know the quote directly, but Should've it's something known to the effect that of like, mm. No one is superstitious until like, and then and then they're like. 
than they are super. Like no one says they're superstitious. Unless I, I love mean, that you don't know the exact no, quote. John Steinbeck though. John Steinbeck. Yeah, John Steinbeck. He was. He said all it. that. Yeah, but it's like no. Just, Something affected like the, the the grapes have a wrath to them, and they were yeah, very yeah, angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah. It's, but like the, the superstitious. John has a Steinbeck. You're telling me a John Steined this <laughs> back? <laughs> Meme it, <laughs> holding like hold, holding like a wine. You have like a big like just like wa- like Merlot mustache. You're telling me a John Stein this back? Mm. <laughs> Epic Beacon watching freaking YouTube with John Steinbeck. Okay, we should finally we should probably do our final segment and then we'll move on to Patreon content. Yeah, okay, I okay. also want this to be a four hour. Yeah. Uh, too bad we'll never see each other again. Yeah, yeah. It is, it it's is, too bad uh, we don't live in the same neighborhood. I I every time and I go into redacted marketplace all the time and every time i see tuna i go in there and i always see tuno which is do you remember this yes oh my god we saw that we we ran into each other in redacted supermarket okay and we there was a uh i feel like i was like i was like intimidated by you honestly because i respect you and then i I mean are you kidding me when i saw when i saw you there i was like oh god i'm so shameful i'm like i'm shopping for like fucking food and shit like, I, felt, <laughs> I really felt like like i was legit just like trying not to be embarrassed do you have like, shame around needing nutrients uh i have a shame around food a shame around food but, so, but anyway you, you, you skinny boy should bond over that but yeah. i was uh i i was like trying to make conversation because i felt embarrassed too i was like oh god i'm like shopping for my bodily needs right now and i look over <laughs> we're in like the the aisle where like the tuna is and i look and i see a can where tuna is misspelled tuna <laughs> And I, I mean, I think that's the, that brand. I Tuno? And I go, Tuno. Oh, really? I truly was like, Gabby has like, a, is like, a, is walking comedy. Because you were truly just like, like, I was like, yeah, I'm getting like some tuna. And you're like, well, watch out for that Tuno. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like a Simpsons joke. And, she, and it was just right there. And she pointed it out. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> So every time wow. I've been there, I've been like, that was, re- it is, it's Tuno. <laughs> That's incredible. It was really incredible. I was like blown away. I was like, yeah. damn. Right. Think, always thinking of Tuno. I yeah. never, I never got the Tuno. But, I have not, but I have yet to. We're coming I've to yet. the final segment. Okay. It's called Self-Perception Corner. Would you please describe how you believe you are perceived by other people? How you think other people perceive you? And then we'll say how we actually perceive you. Oof. Ooh, damn. This is tough. You can walk away. Man, I, uh, okay. How I'm perceived by other people. I think I'm perceived by the world at large as um, someone who uh, needs to um, stick up for himself a little bit more. And by I mean stick up for himself, I like needs to like, um, like you're a good kid. Like, come on, like get out there. Like get, like, get, you know, get out there. Get out there a little bit more. Advocate for yourself a little bit. Advocate for yourself a little bit more as too on the nose. But it's just like, come on, kid, get out there. Like, get after it a little bit more. You're a good kid. Come on, get out there. That's how I feel. I'm perceived. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say smart. <laughs> Thank you. Funny. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Open-minded. Uh, open to experience and uh, interested in other people. Mm-hmm. And that's true. someone I want to keep getting to know. Yeah, very much likewise. That's so I, kind. I would also say like as someone because like I've de- I've like seen like your JFL set with all your characters. I've seen you live many times. Every time I see you and this may sound creepy at first, but just roll with me on this. I think this is a guy who's fluent in his own body. Wow. This is a guy who knows how to use his body as an mm. instrument so well that he's fluent in it. Oh, that's true. You're almost like dancer. Like, I feel like my yeah. si- my sister is a dancer. So I Ooh. know that sort of like language around how to yeah. like use, how to like know your own body very well. Exactly. Some people don't have like a good body awareness. But I feel like mm. you just have like such fluid control over every element at your disposal. That is so kind. Thank you to the both of you. That's so sweet. And of course, you're like a, a lovely person. You're easy to talk to. You're hilarious. You're, but it, it's it is it is incredible to see you do you. what you I do. I do love the character Thank where you. you're the chef and your your hand. Thank is you. And then you start, yeah. That Thank one's you. a lot. Of, that was my favorite is the green screen actor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's my favorite one because Thank I, you. because I have taken motion capture classes. Really? Yes. Have you? Yes. I took a mocap class. Really? We weren't in the suits, but we did okay. like, but we went through the exercise where you have to start with a T pose so that like the cameras can like yeah. start scanning your body. And then yeah. we went through stuff and yeah. Yeah. And so like that especially hit home for me. 
Wow. And so in the classes, are they like talking about like, are they using like kind of a language of like, yeah, they teach you like the vocabulary of what like being on set for a mocap video game shoot is going to be like, yeah. And, uh, and so when I saw that, I was like, this is so I've all, I'm also just like a huge fan of like Lord of the Rings and I love all the special features and like learning how they like filmed it and everything. And so it was, it, for me, it felt like it was just tailor made for me as something to, for me to laugh at. I just I loved it so much. Yeah, I uh, thank you so much. That is so And if you haven't seen it, you have to go on YouTube and look up his JFL set. Yes. His character set is out is outstanding. But in the meantime, please plug and promote anything yes. else you'd like. Gosh, okay. When does this come out? This will come out in maybe 2 or 3 weeks. Okay, cool. Yes. Um let's see. Um I don't know that I have anything specific to promote. Come see Hound Dog. Uh, we're, it's a, we, we, I co-host it with Shosh Broadman. It is half stand-up, half character, monthly show out of friends and lovers. We are so proud of it. Um, and that's happening monthly. Uh, just follow me on, uh, on Instagram at Nick Mestad on TikTok, Nick Mestad. And, um, yeah, I guess, uh, I, I'm involved. I'm doing characters with UCB as soon as that opens again uh, on a Betty team there called Big Noon. Um, so whenever that's happening, but otherwise, um, yeah, I'm on the internet. Just look up Nick Mestad and I think all my stuff, last time I Googled myself that obsessively, I, uh, all that stuff was available there. So yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank nice. you so much. Yeah. You, you, you two are truly the f- like so funny and like my favorite comedians. And like when I see you at any show on any show, I'm like, like truly, I'm like, these are like not just hilarious people, but like truly like. Like my people, and I don't mean that like possessively, but I mean like you're like good people and so funny, and it's like uh, it'd be funny if you meant it possessively. Yeah, you are my people. These are more of mine. You are mine. (laughs) Yes, I'll put you in my marble bag. Well, I am Nick's people, so you (laughs) cannot follow me anywhere. (laughs) I belong. Um, What am I doing uh, when by the time this comes out? I I think. uh, this will come out before If We Did It, which is the murder mystery comedy show I run with Divya Gunasakaran. Come see that at Brooklyn Comedy Collective. We're doing it in the deep space this time. Nice. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, very spooky. Yes. Mm. Uh, for me, by the time this comes out, uh, uh, Vermont Comedy Fest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going to that, uh, go. which is going to be right at the very end of November and the very beginning of December. For a couple days, I'm going to be out there. Uh, come out if you are in Vermont. I would love to see you. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to plug. Uh, thank you to Nick, our guest. Thank you to our producer, Olivia, not here today, but yes. uh, helping us out with all this. Thank you to our listeners. And stick around because we're about to record some bonus content only on Patreon. We've been Two Nose Meerkats. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Two